Hi. In this module, we'll look at the content modifier, and that's really an important part of it. And in addition, the content modifier also gives us the option to understand what is being used uh, and what are the different objects we have and how we can control the flow. So that is what this module is about. So the content, as we saw before, it's about an, a way that you can put in content, uh, change content on the fly, and do some simple scripting of uh, the attributes that you have. So when we look at a message, whether we look at it in, in the trace or in the content modifier, there's three sections. We have uh, it's, uh, the headers, and these are the data that on given adapters would be shown publicly or transmitted to other parts of the flow. It could be something like, uh, yeah, username, um, all the things that you have in an HTTP header that you can actually expose in this section. Um, there are settings on it that allow you to, to identify which of these information that you need to send and which you should not be sending. Um, so on the configuration, you can say it's only these values that I want to expose publicly. All the other ones I don't want to see uh, or should not be seen yet. Then you got properties and properties are internal values for the current flow. And they both headers and properties work much the same way. So you can save data there, you can access it, and you can use it in the flow for different things. And then you have one uh, body, and this is where you can put a payload that you can use um, and, and see more specific data about what's actually in it. There could be a JSON, a text, uh, whatever document that you have in this one. And this is often replaced uh, with the response from from web service so if you're calling at HTTP call you would actually replace this uh, this data uh, in the flow so let's have a look at some of the different options we have so when we look at uh, at uh, our headers we have these uh, different options we have a constant we'll go, just go through these uh, these different options, what they can do and what they are used for. And it's the same if we go into properties, they will also be there. I think the external parameters was there, but now it's not needed anymore. Um, so it's just there for backward compatibility. Um, and then let me just show you what the interface looked like. So here we have our interface. I just copied the one we did from before. And I just wanted to remove this one. So this is the same we got before. So when we're adding a new module, we have the option here to say create or delete. If we put delete, we need to specify some attributes that we want to delete. And as I understand it, it will be executed in this path. So if you say delete and create, uh, it will first delete it and then create the, the element. And here you can specify different information, expressions on what uh, topics to delete. Um, so sometime when you have sent an HTTP call, you will get a set cookie or something like that, and you don't want to be sending that forward in the same process. So that would be something you could delete in this process. If we add a new parameter, demo, as we can see here, we have all of these different options uh, as a set here, uh, expression, stuff like that. Um, so let's go back. So the first one I wanted to do is external configuration. And this is really useful if you have an iFlow and you're deploying to different environments, you would be using different URLs in that process. and then that, that makes a lot of sense and make it a lot easier to do it in that way instead of having to do it in all uh, your scenarios. So let me just show you what that looked like. So here we have our flow. We will set this uh, host name. We can specify it as, a, we don't have that option. So here we'll just specify the host name. 
and then it asks us to define the name, so here we'll just say So that is how you will create it, just into the two slashes. You also have the option here to go into externalize. Here you can see all the values and what they have and, and fill in all the information that you need f for any specific uh, values. So it, you have the same in, in all the other fields. Uh, and in all fields you can use this information to, speci to specify some specific content. And obviously I think API key would make a lot of sense to do in this format. So we'll just copy this API key. And click away into the value here. And then we'll say click save. We uh, can say deploy. We are out in uh, deployment mode, or just click on the module before we go into edit. We can then, in our configuration, go in and see what the API key and these host name is. So this makes this uh, sorting and configuration a lot easier uh, to do on your system. Um, one word of advice with this external configuration is the fewer you have of this, the better, and the more they look alike on the, the systems, the, the better, because sometimes it can be a little challenging just to ensure that when you transport that everything is transported correctly. Um, so that was the first the external parameter we added. Then we have expressions, and expressions is one really cool thing that allow you to actually set a lot of properties in the flow get runtime information without having to to call scripts um, and get data from other areas and stuff like that and and get a timestamp there are some limitations on what you can make in this you cannot make everything um, so you cannot get to tomorrow's date or something like that you will need to script that um, because yeah that's the only way to do it um, but if you just want a current timestamp you can do that uh, quite easily uh, in this format uh, so there's a block here that's pretty good that that tells you a lot about all the different uh, scenarios that you want to use what are the the properties and how you can access these um, and just go through some of it um, so we will add a new parameter here, we'll call it current time. And here we'll set this as expression. And then in our expression, we will just put in this one. Oh. We will deploy. So let's see if we run this flow for headers. We should get one that's called current time. Current time here, we can see the current time that's being sent just because we added this uh, scripting here. Um, the same as headers and properties work the same, have the same options. Um, and you can also specify that we want the plus. Um, Let's see if what, what we have in the incoming payload. Uh, so if we have in, in here set up uh, demo header. So in when our, we send our input payload, we will put in demo as the input and then the demo value as the content. So we can actually use that also in here. So if we watch... Uh, we'll just get what the data is here and we'll take the expression actually we'll just put it down here that makes maybe more sense uh, so we have the option here also to combine these things uh, and then we just want to space our header dot 
demo as the header name was and we'll just say deploy it will deploy it and we have deployed it we should then hopefully see our timestamp being oh it's not really working maybe it is because we have not accepted demo as a, a part of the parameter that we want to have allowed internally um, so the in our head runtime configuration we have this one that says allowed headers and we can put in demo here um, let's see if, how that would work so here you can specify it and I think it says here that you can specify multiple with, with stars or with uh, types or you can use a star into it so let's see what if it have filters out everything so now we can see we are getting the header value in so there's a filter on what it will send back and forth uh, with these uh, information and we can see we now also got the header down here so this makes some coding unnecessary and make it easy to just combine different content then we also have the option to use uh, express uh, XPath. So if you have a payload that's using XPath, uh, you can specify it like that. Just uh, since now we don't have uh, XPath in this uh, document, but it's fairly simple. Just specify XPath or the, the the value you want. Then you would want to specify XPath, and here you would the 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 type of it. If you want a, a field that's called count, you can specify it like that. If you want namespaces on it, you need to put that namespace information into the run runtime information up here, uh, like we have here. Then you can specify namespace like that, and then you can use that in your namespace. Uh, if you want to specify something specific here, but yeah, XPath is really uh, useful if you're just getting an X, a, XML document and just want to pass it, extract some of these values, and then use it in the flow. Next is uh, number ranges. So in the monitoring application, it is possible to put in a number range. And with that number range, you can generate unique numbers from for every request. And then you can use that into the, the payload uh, somehow. Um, or with expression or coding or mapping or whatever you want to do. So you simply just go to your monitoring part, the monitoring here. You got the one that says number range. You create a new one. What is your start one? What's the end value? And it should be too long. And that it should rotate. Otherwise, I guess you would get an arrow once it's filled up. So we just copy this value. Add a new head element that's called counter. Of type number range and then we can see it here if we run it again we should see a counter that's 10 now hopefully it's 11 now so it, it increases every time you call it uh, and in other parts of the document you can reuse that value making it a lot well simple to to get counters. We have the option of using uh, global values uh, or, or variables that saved outside of the current flow. Um, so you can create like we, if we have a token, you can save it externally you uh, and outside of the flow and then reuse it in the flow in multiple times. That makes it uh, really, well, uh, if you have a scenario where you want to look up a token, an authentication token, and use it for an hour, then you can use that. 
Um, and that token can then be global only in the current flow or locally in, in the, the local flow. And then you just specify the, that uh, flow parameter once you have it. But we'll go through the data store a little later about how you can actually use this. There's also a, a head on property option that allow you to, as I understand it, link these values in, in the runtime. I haven't been using that uh, so much. One important aspect of this is if you want to restore a, a payload. So say you have an incoming payload you send in, you want to do an HTTP authentication. Uh, and that HTTP authentication would then return a token and you want to use that token. So you, the, the response of that payload would be then the, the, the token or the, the full flow. You want then to replace it with the original value. And then, yeah, you want to have access to that one. If you don't do that, once it's called, it will just be removed and you don't really know what what is in it. So um, there's a Groovy script parameter that allow you just to, to say uh, body. And I have done that here under the property. I've created one that's called original payload. It's an expression just saving the value of body. And then after that, we'll then call our body again and change the body. If we then want to restore the body to the original form before it was changed, we would simply just go it go do it like this. That was the wrong one I had copied. So we will do property. Deploy this. And then this would obviously fail, but if you want to figure out what's happening, the best way is to get into trace. And that's also the best way to understand a lot of these things. If you're not just put it into the header, then set the flow into trace mode and run it again. And that also, so it fails, that's okay, because we are sending something wrong, most likely. And if we look at what we're sending, we can see here, here we have our original payload, this is uh, the normal text string. Then we are doing our content modifier and then this is creating the, the JSON. Probably not the best way to do the JSON, but it is creating the JSON. And then we get to the end and here we have um, done the restore of the original payload. So this is a way you can restore it, uh, save it for for a period of time and you can see there up here that it's saved as an input stream in the the iflow so it's yeah you cannot see it if you want to see it you just need to specify it save as body string and then you can see it uh, as a part of the parameters so uh, thanks for watching this module uh, hope you it provided some value